We're back to test the four gigabyte versus eight gigabyte arguments for the RX 480. And I've got the box on the table because we have our two cards in Crossfire testing this instant. But today we're looking at four gigabytes versus eight gigabytes specifically. We did this previously with the GTX 960 Nvidia card testing two gigabytes versus four gigabytes. The story has changed. Graphics cards now have more VRAM, but games are also demanding more. So that's what we're looking at. Before getting to the benchmark, this content is brought to you by Origin PC and the new Origin Kronos, which is equipped with the RX 480 and is customizable and upgradable on their site, including custom paint. So getting into the coverage here, first of all, we used our reviewer copy of the RX 480, which performs identically to this. I validated it. Uh, the one instance it is different and it is somewhat important one for debugging is we are able to flash our firmware to create a four gigabyte RX 480. So that's what I did go into this benchmark knowing that uh, the one note that is relevant to that end is that the memory on four gigabyte cards that you can buy is seven gigabits per second. It is eight gigabits per second on the eight gigabyte card. But when we flashed the firmware, I checked, and this is good on AMD for doing this, uh, the memory clock was actually slightly reduced and was comparable to what you can buy on the real market. So those were variables that were taken into account and things look good for the comparison. We are not doing thermals, power, or noise levels. It will basically be the same as what you see in our RX 480 review. Check that if you want more. What we're looking at is all games and a few things to expect here. With four gigabyte versus eight gigabyte or really any disparity in VRAM for video cards, the aspect of games that will stress that the most will be anti-aliasing, which really heavily eats into VRAM potentially. That's because it's taking multi taps or multiple samples per pixel to determine what color that pixel should be. So if you have 8x MSAA, also known as 8 tap, it's sampling each pixel eight times. That is a lot of additional sampling and that does impact VRAM. Another aspect uh, would be the uh, post FX side of things, post FX and temporal effects will more heavily impact the processing side of the GPU than the VRAM. So if we have a game that is more heavy on post effects and computational effects, then we might actually not see that much of a difference between four gigabytes and eight gigabytes. But let's run through the charts and then talk about why they look the way they do. Let's start with one of the games where we see a big difference in performance between four and eight gigabytes. This is Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which I'm reviving to our bench specifically for the test. I'm not even gonna show the other video cards. We're just looking at the RX 480 because that's all this video is about. We've configured settings to very high with four tab MSAA and are seeing 53 FPS average on the eight gigabyte RX 480, which is a 14.5% increase over the 45.3 FPS average of the four gigabyte card. The difference is actually very noticeable and it's not just because of the averages, it's because of the low performance. So as always with low level GPU performance comparison, it is important to look at 1% and 0.1% low metrics or low frame times to get the full picture of things. And the eight gigabyte card, although it runs at 53 FPS average, it puts out 32.3 FPS, 0.1% lows. And the four gigabyte card falls to just 25.7 FPS, 0.1% lows or a 25.68% increase if you move to eight gigabytes. So that is a 25.68% change from four gigabytes to eight gigabytes on the 0.1% lows. And this is noticeable in play where you will see more frame tearing on the four gigabyte card, it gets choppier. And that is actually something you feel as a player, the fluidity just isn't quite as good as on eight gigabytes. 1% uh, lows are also separated by a percent difference of 25, so 25% difference. This is also something we saw when testing the GTX 960s on two gigabytes and four gigabytes, where the cards were most heavily impacted on games like Assassin's Creed. Shadow of Mordor will request all the VRAM you have available, but requesting it and seeing quote unquote utilization in GPU-Z doesn't mean it's actively engaging all of that requested VRAM and tasking or instructing it. We tested the game at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K with ultra settings. At 1080p, we're seeing results of 78.3 FPS average, 41 FPS 1% low, and 36 FPS 0.1% lows on the RX 480 8GB card. Dropping to 4GB, those numbers barely change. There's a 0.3 FPS difference, and the bench pretty much perfectly executes every time we repeat the benchmark, and we do repeat testing iterations to be sure. So this is a measurable and real difference 
and it's accurate, but it's still just 0.3 FPS, so it is imperceptible as a user. Basically the same, and there's no real advantage to an extra four gigabytes in this game, regardless of resolution. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is processing and post-FX intensive, but it also uses a lot of texture filtration techniques, and using those techniques does impact VRAM pretty heavily. For our upcoming Crossfire benchmark, this will be an interesting test case to see how post-processing impacts the Crossfire setup. But for now, we're still looking at VRAM, and Mirror's Edge Catalyst has some unique performance results at 1080p Ultra. We see the average FPS between 8 gigabytes and 4 gigabytes is about the same, 74.3 FPS versus 72.3 FPS. It's a 2.73% difference. And even the minimums are good with mostly identical results between resolutions. At 1440p Ultra, we're still seeing gaps of one FPS maximally. The difference between averages is 0.64%, so negligible. But then we look at 1080p Hyper, and this increases texture quality, mesh quality, other filtration effects, and VRAM syncing settings. And 1080 Hyper produces dismal stuttering after a few minutes of play. This isn't something you'll see reflected in a short benchmark period, but if you're playing the game properly for a bit, the VRAM begins saturating with resources and frame rates can drop hard. Just from this chart, we see our average looks like 40 FPS versus 53 FPS, or a 27.96% difference, but the 0.1% lows are even worse, down to 18 FPS from 31.3. That's a 53.96% difference. These lows are noticeable as severe stutters in frame rate output because the frame times have become inconsistent, but there's more to it than that. Here's a results table, different from our chart, we ran multiple extra passes on Mirror's Edge specifically because of this issue and found that the first few sets of data were poor in performance, but not completely unplayable. After playing for some time, and every single time thereafter, we'd see drops to 12 FPS, 0.1% lows, and in the 20s for the average frame rate, making some really intense stuttering and slowing down the game time overall. So by dropping to 4 gigabytes, we've gone from a relatively playable 53 FPS average to an unplayable and fluctuating range of 26 to 47 FPS average. GTA 5 was completely retested on the RX 480 cards for our bench. After speaking with AMD's Scott Wasson, we received an unreleased in-development driver that should resolve the previously mentioned GTA 5 stuttering issues from launch day. The driver update is 16.7.1, and this is the only game in the test that runs with this driver set. The rest are still on 16.6.2, or the press drivers for release day. We see an average FPS of 85.3 on the 8GB card at 1080p, with the 4GB card at 83 FPS. That's an imperceptible but measurable difference. 1% lows are also close, only 3.35% difference, and 0.1% lows are 54.3 FPS versus 51 FPS on the 8 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte options respectively, another imperceptible but measurable difference. 4K and 1440p show similar performance results, leaving GTA 5 a title where it doesn't seem to matter too much whether you get a 4 gigabyte or 8 gigabyte RX 480. That said, we're only testing for single GPUs here and Crossfire may change the story. Black Ops 3 is another title with mixed results like Mirror's Edge. Black Ops has also been an optimized title for us in the past on these benches and one which has generally pushed AMD a bit further up the ranks than some other games on the bench. At 1080p, we see the 8GB card running at 132.3 FPS average, 105 FPS 1% lows, and 93 FPS 0.1% lows, all very tightly timed and suited for 120Hz gaming if you wanted that, and you'd even get to 144Hz with some tweaks. Moving to 4GB, our average frame rate drops by 4.17% to 127 FPS, and 0.1% lows drop by 13.98% to 80 FPS. Increasing to 1440p, we see more of an impact to those 0.1% lows. So previously, the difference was actually pretty large, but not something that you really perceive at 1080p unless you're really hardcore about wanting 144 hertz. And at 1440p, the 8 gigabyte RX 480 is now at 83.3 FPS average, 67.3 1% low. 61.3, 0.1% lows, which is incredibly tightly timed. And the average is only slightly faster than the 4GB card at 80 FPS, but the 0.1% lows on the 4GB card are 28.7% lower than 8GB. So that's almost 30% lower percent change from 8 to 4GB, and that means occasional stutters become visible in gameplay. 
and that is actually something you can feel as a player. 4K produces similar results at 41 FPS average for 8 gigabytes, 34 for 1% lows, 32 for 0.1% lows. But on the 4 gigabyte card, that changes to a similar average and 1% low number, but a decrease of 60% on the 0.1% low metrics. And now, of course, you might say, well, this isn't really what I want to play on for Black Ops anyway, 4K at 40 FPS, but if you're doing setting tweaks, then it actually might become relevant. We tested more games than this, like The Division, Ashes of Singularity, and others, and you'll find those results in our article linked below. As we found previously for the 2 gigabyte versus 4 gigabyte GTX 960 testing, the differences are present. You can actually see them in almost every game. There is a visible difference in numbers, but not necessarily in gameplay to the user. A 0.3 FPS difference is not something you care about. Neither is uh, the difference we saw in a lot of the games like Shadow of Mordor, maybe 1 to 3 FPS. Stuff like that is really, frankly, irrelevant as a user. But there are games where it is actually a massive difference. We saw the 60% gap in 0.1% lows for Black Ops at 4K. Not really a super common use case, but if you look at more common use cases, we can kind of push that one aside, look at something like 1440p in Black Ops, and we were still seeing almost 30% reduction in those numbers. And that remained true for other games as well, like Mirror's Edge Catalyst and Assassin's Creed Syndicate, another game that has proven to be very VRAM dependent in previous tests. So it depends on what you're doing. There are other considerations that matter as well. For example, putting two 4 gigabyte RX 480s in Crossfire versus two 8 gigabyte ones could have pretty different results than what we're seeing here, on large anyway. We'll see a lot of the same kind of concepts, but it may be exaggerated if you do Crossfire cards. And that's something we're working on testing as soon as possible, but the reason you would see that difference would mostly be because you're increasing sort of the, uh, the computational potential and throughput, or maximum potential throughput of the cards by doubling them. Uh, of course, it's not a doubling exactly of, of power, but uh, we're keeping still a lower VRAM and we might be exceeding what the, uh, the cards are capable of in terms of VRAM capacity. So we'll look at that as it comes up. As for whether or not 8 gigabytes is worth it for the RX 480, that really depends. It's an extra $40 on reference from 4 to 8 gigabytes, 200 to 240 dollars. And if you're playing games like Black Ops or Mirror's Edge with high settings, when I say that I mean hyper settings, or just running the higher texture and filtration effects, uh, or you're playing games like Assassin's Creed, that series has historically had this sort of performance output on these cards, it is definitely better to get the 8 gigabyte card. If you are playing the other games, and I'll, I'll read the, off the list here, we've got Ashes of Singularity, Talos Principle, The Division, Metro Last Light, Shadow of Mordor, to some extent GTA V, those games see very little impact from the VRAM change. Uh, the impact might be a few percent at most, but it's always a couple FPS maximally, and that's not super noticeable. Uh, so those types of games, you can kind of ignore it. You should definitely buy 8 gigabytes for games that are texture heavy, anti-aliasing heavy, if, or if that's just something you really like, or texture filtration. But otherwise, 4 gigabytes for the RX 480 is an acceptable way to save $40 if you're kind of in that lower price category. Uh, but Crossfire may be an instance where we need to look more closely at performance and see if that changes, and we will be doing that soon. One thing for certain, these games that produce the disparity in VRAM performance are consistent in their disparity, so we've seen that a few times now for multiple cards. And it's also time to move away from 2 gigabyte cards. I know there's not a lot of them left out there, uh, but the, it, the use cases for 2 gigabyte cards have closed, especially with the price reduction on 4 gigabytes on the whole. I would recommend 2 gigabytes for a really cheap home theater PC, something that's not meant to really do a lot of gaming. Maybe if it is, it's more casual or older games, uh, but generally definitely kind of start pushing towards that 4 gigabyte value because games are drawing more VRAM. And there's a lot of reasons for that that we can discuss in future Ask GNs or something. Uh, but as always, thank you for watching. That pretty much recaps the differences. Totally up to you whether you want to buy 4 or 8 but hopefully that data helps you make that decision. Patreon link in the post video if you want to help us out by supporting the channel and paying for all this because I did buy this out of pocket. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribing. I'll see you all next time.
But let's run through the charts and then talk about why they look the way they do with benchmarking music. Okay, so that was enough time to look at all 20 charts. 